Welcome back to the fourth part of my little tutorial on basic modeling techniques in AnswerSet programming. My name is still Thorsten Schaub and I'm still using the Enquids puzzle to illustrate these modeling techniques to you. Now, in the second part we have developed an advanced encoding, overcoming certain problems observed on the first encoding. Now, let's look at this encoding again and see how far it actually scales. We've already seen before that our advanced encoding allows us to easily solve a problem with a dozen of queens. Now if we go to 100 queens, the solution is still immediate. If we go to 200 queens, we actually observe now that grounding took a little time until really clasp started uh, reading input from, from the grounder. Let's go to 300. Actually, now it is more obvious. Now the grounding is happening. Clasp has not yet started reading from its input. This will happen very soon now. Here we go. Now Clasp is reading the input, but let's wait for the ultimate figures. Here they come. So the overall solving process has taken 9.5 seconds, but among this, a very negligible time has actually been spent for solving. So more than nine seconds we actually spent on grounding. And now the question is, of course, how, how come? What is the reason that we put so much effort into, 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 into grounding, while the solving time, more or less, does not really go up here? So grounding hinders the scaling at this point. So for this, let's look at our problem again. Here we go. To get an idea, where the grounder actually spends its time, let's uncomment this part of the program and reground the reduce program. So keep in mind before we spend 9.5 seconds, now doing this again here for 300, we just spend 0.6 uh, as opposed to 9.5 seconds. So this is a big reduction, hence the culprit for this uh, heap of grounding time lies in the last two rules. Looking a bit closer at these rules, we actually observe that building up the instances in the aggregate involves solving a constraint satisfaction problem here and here. That is, once we fix the value for d here, we have to look for appropriate instances of the queen predicate that contain values for i and j such that this equation here is satisfied. Sometimes this succeeds, sometimes this, fa this fails, but we spend a lot of time in building up the aggregates. This can actually be avoided in a quite straightforward way by pre-computing the solutions of the constraint satisfaction problem. So coming back to the actually the problem, we see that here we are doing search. We search for the solution of this CSP. The idea in this improved encoding is actually to pre-compute these solutions and simply provide them to the aggregate as in forms of tables. Because keep in mind, a grounder is after all nothing else than a deductive database system. So here for each i and j, is each row and column, we compute deterministically the corresponding diagonal. This forms a, a table and we use the tuples in this table here to steer the uh, instantiation of the aggregate. And this involves no search at all, just straightforward computation and hopefully this actually improves the grounding, which we can verify next. Now let's ground this. And well, first of all, keep in mind that before it took us 9.5 9 seconds to ground the formerly advanced encoding. Now doing the same, but with the pre-computation involved. Take some time, but now grounding has significantly dropped. So we still have the same amount of solving time. So here we dropped from 0.35 to 0 0.30, but this is more or less noise, so this is more or less the same time. But here there is a significant drop from 9.5 seconds to 1.5 seconds. 
What I was actually just telling about this noise in the solving process can actually be made much more precise. In fact, both encodings induce the same, the very same constraints to the solving process. So of course, this part here and this part is identical, so yielding the same constraints. And although here in these integrity constraints, the instantiation produces quite some overhead in, in doing the search when solving the constraint satisfaction problem, we get the same constraints in the original advanced encoding as well as in this encoding, just that the instances or this, the tuples with which we will be instantiating have been pre-computed. And the difference thus lies in these tables doing the pre-computation for us, but keep in mind these are tables, hence facts that are true, and the solver will never see them, they will not be incorporated in the solving process. Hence the argument is that both of them uh, constitute the very same uh, logic programs or constraint satisfaction problems to be solved by the solver, but let's make this precise by looking actually at the empirical figures that we get. So first of all, let's provide you with a better view on this and enlarge the window. Now. Here we just add the stats option to see what we get internally. So we start out with uh, 270,000 atoms, 360,000 uh, rules, and we end up with 90,000 constraints, no, sorry, with 90,000 variables and 2,500 constraints. Now this was our encoding that does the pre-computation. Let's do the same without the pre-computation. Again, it takes a little bit longer. But after almost 10 seconds, we get the result. And now, actually looking here, we had 270,000 atoms. Now, here, we, of course, we have much less because we do not do the pre-computation. Accordingly, there are also many more rules. Of course, facts are, are rules. They are counted as such compared to here. But at the end of the day, we get exactly the same number of variables here and there, and exactly the same number of constraints in both encodings. Hence, both um, in both solving processes, we actually attack the same problem. And all the time, actually, that we spend more on solving the former encoding was spent in grounding. This example has nicely illustrated how we can eliminate a combinatorial search process from the grounding and turn it into a deterministic computation. However, to be honest, this stretched a little bit our notion of declarativity that we discussed in the former part, because our boost to the encoding was actually gained by some insights into the grounding and how the grounder actually worked. Okay, now this concludes the fourth part of this tutorial. Stay tuned for the next part where I will be talking about an experimental feature of the new Gringo system.